Welcome to the course on cross-cultural communication and management. I will first introduce myself. My name is Mywin. Andy work here at AMSEB, teaching and researching in cross-cultural management. I'm also a freelance writer, which is part of my job as a journalist many years ago, but it seems I cannot give up. I combine my research with corporate training, especially for multinationals. I would consider myself a cultural nomad in the sense that I often have to rotate myself throughout the year in three different countries where different members of my families live. As of 2020, I was creating this online course for my base in Australia with the help of artificial intelligence. At the moment, I'm finishing my master degree of applied neuroscience at King's College London. You will see that I incorporated bits and bits of brain science in our course. The reason is that neuroscience has become a very effective tool for many disciplines to reevaluate their theories and practices. Cross-cultural management is not an exception. In the light of neuroscience, our field is facing many new questions and is changing rapidly. I'm very proud to be part of the movement, and I'm very excited to share this with you. Cross-cultural communication and management is a subject that helps us to work in international context. Topic one will address the question of what is culture and actually why do we need it at all. I know it sounds a little bit strange, but culture is like the air. We often take it for granted, and we hardly ever stop to think about it. To work and live internationally, however, requires us to make this subconscious behavior a conscious one. Topic two will address the incredible level of diversity we see in the culture around us. To deal with this complexity, we need to understand what drives the diversity. In other words, what makes cultures so diverse? Topic three continues topic two and tackles the dynamic of cultural diversity. If we know what makes cultures so diverse, then we also want to know how this diversity is changing, and so we can deal with it properly. So let's start with our first topic: What is culture, and from the biological and evolutionary point of view, why do we need it at all? In the textbook. You probably read about the tragic story of Sandra Piovazan. She was one of many pet owners who was killed by the animals that they once loved so dearly. In her case, the pets were not completely wild, but their nature still won over. We can clearly see that animals live with humans, but they act like animals and listen to their instinct, written in their genes. Let's compare this with Oksana Malaya, an Ukrainian woman. Who was neglected by her parents during her childhood, and so she spent her time among the family's dogs. When she was found at age seven, she couldn't talk; she would crawl on all fours, and she behaved like a dog. It took a long time for her to come back in the human society. Eventually, she had a job and a partner. There are many of similar cases in the world. Tarzan is one of them, although he is a fancy imaginary character. What we learn from this is that animals do not adopt humans' culture and would follow their DNA. In contrast, humans would adopt animals' culture and put our DNA aside. Just like you and I have adopted the culture where we were born or living in, these children adopted the culture of the dogs or gorillas who raised them. So, for the animals, their genes overrule the social environment. But for humans, the reverse is true. Our DNA gives way to the social environment. So the main difference that sets us apart from animals is that animals rely on their DNA to survive. While humans rely on a culture to survive, evolution has clearly done something here by reducing, so to speak, the role of DNA for humans and made culture the main guidance for survival. But why is that? Basic knowledge on biology would tell us that it, in order to evolve a new behavior that is better for survival, for example, evolving wings to fly, there must be a natural selection. With some luck, a good genetic mutation would appear. And over many generations, this mutation can spread among a population and eventually change the behavior for better survival. That's for animals. What about humans? 
Instead, it takes a split second, for ideas to jump from one head to another. And so, we will not wait until we can evolve wings to fly. But, we pull ideas together, we learn from each other, and we create airplane. Unlike genes, cultural elements can be copied, learned and spread within a very short period of time. Unlike genes, cultural elements are endless, and they will only get richer with time. It's fair to say that because of culture we have evolved much further ahead of animals, and that's why we have populated every corner of the earth. So because culture, as a resource, is faster and richer than DNA, all human beings are born with a very receptive mind to absorb the first culture that we see. That is why Oksana learned to behave like a dog, since that's the only way she could survive. Now, does that mean we are always the helpless product of our culture? Does that mean culture dictates and defines who we are and we can actually do nothing about it? The answer is, fortunately no. Culture is not only faster and richer than genes, it is also more dynamic. It is correct that we are, to a certain extent, the product of culture. It shapes us. It dictates and defines who we are. For example, we would speak out mother tongue, worship our gods, and believe in our specific values. But, we are not helpless products of our culture. We can shape culture and be a producer. AMSEB, for example, is a business school that actively promotes a culture of sustainability. It is a conscious effort to change the current culture of excessive consuming and dumping waste. In this sense, we are the producer of our own culture. And of course, we can even change the culture of others well, for better and worse. A history of colonialization attests this. In our modern time, we should be aware of this power that we have, and aim to change ourselves, as well as the culture around us, towards a sustainable direction. To conclude this topic, animals take guidance for life from their DNA, but humans take guidance for life from culture. Culture is much more superior than DNA, and that's why evolution has geared us to take guidance for life from culture, and not from our DNA. Culture is fast, elements can jump from one head to another in a split second. Culture is rich, elements are endless, and only become richer with time. Culture is dynamic, it shapes us, but we can also change culture. Culture is the survival strategy for humans to advance. Learning how to adapt to and change culture is survival strategy for those who live and work internationally.